After the departure of David and Eloise Chevrier, the church inaugurated the first of many Elizabeth Betty Benson Awards, which recognized individuals and organizations for their faith in action. For her tireless activism towards abolition of capital punishment and ministering to those on death row, Betty was given the first award. What a special lady she was. I just kept remembering her ministry to pray for folks on death row every Sunday. That was just a special gift that we had in Betty. There's so many things I remember about Betty. My friend, someone I truly admired, just full of love for everybody else, and she cared about you, you knew, okay? And she would go to no ends to assist you. Can't help but love somebody like that. I don't, certainly don't pray to saints or think much about saints, but if there are saints, Betty is one. In later years, the award was given to people and groups that worked against war and advocated for human rights, environmental justice, economic justice, victims of police brutality, and the rights of indigenous people. Continuing Wellington's tradition of prophetic witness proved to be a challenge. After a series of interim pastors that were not a good fit with Wellington, in 2007, Reverend Dan Dale was called as its pastor and was joined by his wife, Nancy Jones. He was a mighty force on demonstrating for immigration, anti-war. And he was a big man like David had been. And he'd throw his arms out and he could never be confined by the pulpit. Reverend Dale's commitment to asylum seekers and his passionate dedication to community organizing strengthened Wellington's mission for nearly a decade. Meanwhile, the church's building was showing its age and its limits. As open as the congregation was to the community, the sanctuary was not accessible. A congregant had an idea to raise funds. My whole family's in circus. And I was like, why don't we do a fundraiser to raise money for accessibility for the church? And we did it that year. To see the joy in the children's faces, I was moved almost to tears of how much fun the, the little children were having in, in our place of worship. My grandson, he just loved it. We loved it, I thought it was magical. There was nothing from my past church experience that linked with what I was seeing at Wellington. The people seemed to have a different, kind of a different definition of what it was to be religious, what it was to go to church. I don't know, it's not, it's like a ministry of, of fun really, um, it's not, you know, it's not a political thing, but it is something that brought people from, from Lakeview and brought people from all over. Nino's Circus became a holiday tradition at Wellington and was performed for eight years in a row. It was family, it was warm, it was, it was closed. And uh, I believe we worked eight years and then finally we got we had, the church was accessible to everybody. As the sanctuary entered its final decade of service, Wellington continued its advocacy for the environment, held vigils against mass incarceration, 
and found a new way to champion immigrant and refugee rights. Stand up. Courageous love. Speak up. Courageous love. Rise up. Courageous love. Don't give up. Courageous love. Twelve years ago, we began co-sponsoring El Pueblo Canta, which means the people sing. That's part of our ministry, bringing people together through El Pueblo Canta to celebrate the beauty and power uh, and compassion of those people working in support of immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers. In 2008, Wellington hosted what would become an annual celebration, El Pueblo Canta. It's been really cool that my church gets to host this musical event, an international event, to raise awareness and uh, funding for immigration-related programming in the city. It's just this cool collision of, again, those powerhouses of the church, the inter-agency, um, inter-community type of work, as well as music. Uh, it's like, what's, what's better than that? Seven years ago, we started a program called Eco Arts, and we have had each year 25 to 30 uh, children, three years to 13 years old, who would come to Wellington and uh, art and music and drama. Because of that work, we were able to be beyond the walls of our church. In 2014, the National Immigrant Justice Center, an organization founded by Reverend Craig Moosen in the 1970s, came to Wellington asking for help supporting two refugee families seeking asylum. Wellington again said yes and voted to join a larger group of sponsors that assisted them in gaining asylum. Environmental justice had been a critical part of Wellington's mission, dating back to the 1920s and the Black Skies campaign. As the pace of climate change threatened more and more communities around the globe, Wellington committed even more deeply to this work. We began to talk about what we could do at Wellington to lower its footprint as a physical structure. Conscientious Projector was a, the, the idea was to show a social justice, environmentally relevant film on a regular basis, if we could, and many times we did, we brought in the producer of the film and afterwards had a, uh, a discussion. We had a whole committee that we formed on, on looking at ways to what we were calling Green the Church, and out of that came the decision to install solar panels. Wellington appealed to me because of its dedication to community. Not only the scriptures, but living out the scriptures. Putting in solar panels were far beyond the financial benefits. It was more about what does it do to the environment? What, what is our responsibility to our brothers and sisters that are going to come in the future, let alone the ones that are here today. When Wellington member Polly Ulrich died in a car accident, her husband David ensured her memory would live on in the mission of Wellington. I also remember uh, with very bittersweet memories, um, <laughs> I'll have trouble with this, uh, Polly's memorial service. The church was full and full of uh, good spirit. And um, uh, 
right in the middle of the service, the sun shone down uh, through the skylights. And it was a little direct intervention. One of the things that I wanted to do uh, after Polly died was to do something at Wellington that would keep her spirit alive. Wellington dedicated the Art for Joy program in Polly's honor. Classes were made available to children and adults in the congregation and the neighborhood and were taught by Ashley Clark and Mark Burge Anderson. We uh, had many wonderful sessions there, and I know there are probably young people whose lives have been changed forever because they were at the Polly Elric Art for Joy program. In 2011, Wellington sadly said goodbye to another beloved leader. After receiving a challenging health diagnosis, Reverend Dale retired. Wellington has been an important part of my life uh, since 1982. It was very hard to leave. When we lost these men, Dan retired. It was such a hole in our community, I think. What really um, gave me a depth of feeling and commitment to Wellington was Pastor Dan and his preaching and his connecting of social justice issues to, uh, to the gospel. After the departure of Reverend Dale, the congregation voted to arrange with a larger group of churches, sanctuary for more families. The building also remained a haven for those in need. When several heads of state met at the NATO summit in Chicago in 2012, thousands of protesters marched against the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Once again, Wellington offered sanctuary to those fighting for justice. When Michael McConnell decided that uh, the American Men's Service Committee had volunteered to offer hospitality when all the protesters were coming for Occupy NATO, his office space soon was overcrowded, so we, they volunteered Wellington. Thursday night, we had hundreds of people from all over the country congregating at Wellington. We had to serve food through the street basement windows and put a soup kitchen on the sidewalk. The emphasis, of course, was on outreach. And the building was there for our use, but it was not a priority. It was really a uh, patch here, patch there, we'll put that off. Uh, we'll give money away uh, to help this organization and then we'll fix the roof later. After the departure of Reverend Dale, the church again entered a challenging time searching for leadership. Several pastors came and went without finding a good match for this truly maverick congregation. The times were troubled. Political divisions in the country worsened. Racism was on the rise, and the climate crisis loomed. As the building aged and more time, energy, and money was needed for its upkeep, the congregation began to ask if it was time to leave this old house. It is an incredibly brave and faithful move for the people of Wellington to say, you know, this old house was a great house for a season in our lives, and it's not the house for us anymore. In June 2020, after deciding to sell the building and leave their home of 110 years, and during the height of a global pandemic, the church called as pastor Anne Louise Hawk who was joined by her partner, Dr. Shelby Hatch. We 
nowhere in the gospel, anywhere, does Jesus say, and the kingdom of heaven is like a beautiful church building. I feel like there's a certain sense of excitement as we go out into the world and really living into what the people that Jesus has called us to be. Wellington has become a church without walls and you know we're exploring what exactly and what path we want to take. Um, it has been absolutely exciting because you know the sky is the limit. And now that we're leaving and we're re identifying ourselves in some way. What's our role as Christians? Why be a Christian? Since its beginning, since before its beginning, this community has been so clear about its call. Not only to be that prophetic voice that urges people to live out the gospel in ways big and small in their lives, not just to call people to do that, but to actually live it out together as a community. And perhaps the next invitation is go out in the wilderness, as we say in our benediction, as we say at our communion table, that God is with us when we walk that walk into the wilderness. So we will find wonderful and unique adventures as we explore the path God is now opening to us, and we will do it with our hearts wide open. And my friends, as our Wellington song says, we give thanks for the unknown blessings already on their way. We give thanks. Amen. What a grand adventure we could have. servant to